Hi everyone. In every project we've done so far, everything worked exactly the same every single time we ran it. That's because there was no random element. There was no chance to what we would actually create. An animation would go from point A to point B. My math functions would work exactly the same. What we're going to do is start introducing that random element, the, as if I'm shuff shuffling a deck of cards and I'm picking one from random, or I'm rolling a die. We're going to use random numbers to introduce that random element into all the applications we're going to create. Random numbers are generated pretty easily in ActionScript, but there are some special tricks you need to learn about how to actually get the random numbers that you actually want to get for your example project. So I already have something loaded up here. So let me walk you through the basics of the rounding function of the math class, and then show you how to customize it to meet your specific, your specific project needs. So in this, in this file, I have a variable that I'm creating called num. Num is going to be a number, meaning it can be a whole number or a decimal number. You notice that I'm assigning to the variable num a value uh, that's actually being derived from a method of the math class called the math class's random method. I'm assigning that value to, to num, and then I'm tr outputting that to the, to the trace statement. So let me actually show you what this does. If you look at the bottom, I'm just running this application multiple times. You notice I always get a decimal number, a very long decimal number, but a decimal number that's somewhere between 0 and 1. That's what the random function does. It always generates some decimal number from 0 to 1. Now, you might ask yourself, well, that's not very useful. If I wanted to create a game that simulates rolling a die, I need a number from 1 to 6. What you need to do is think of what think of this decimal number from 0 to 1 as a range. And I'm going to proportionally extend that range or shift the range by multiplying it by different values to get the kind of desired result that I want. So I'm going to show you the example that I have underneath it and how this actually modifies that random number. So I'm going to uncomment these lines here. Oops, and let me do that again. Uncomment those lines. There we go. And as you can see, I'm using some of those uh, rounding functions that I introduced in the last in the last video. In this case, I'm using the ceiling function. What the ceiling function is doing is it's going to take whatever number that I'm generating by the rounding uh, method, and you notice I'm taking that and I'm multiplying it by six, and then I'm going to be always be bumping that up to the next whole number. So let me run this, and I'll show you what happens. So as you can see, when I run this, I get 2, 2, 4, 2, 3, 2, 3, and 1. You notice I have an example of every single number that I would roll on a die. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. What I'm doing is I'm taking that random, that random number that's generated, the decimal from 0 to 1, and I want to take that, that, take that range and proportionally scale that to 6. So it will go somewhere from 0 up to 6. I don't want a 0. I can't, roll a, a, I can't roll a 0 on a die. So I'm going to actually use the ceiling method to always push that up. So the lowest I can get is a 1, and the highest I can get is a 6. Now you might ask yourself, there are some weird, you know, there are some weird situations where I might want a 0, or I might want not want a 6, and you might say, well, there are those three different rounding methods that are in ActionScript. Which one do I use? So I actually have created a, a, little, um, a little application here that's, I call it a proof, that actually shows what each of these different methods would do. So I'm using the same exact thing that we did before, where I'm taking a random number and I'm multiplying it by 6. But I'm applying each one of the three different methods here. So as you can see with floor, I'll get a number from 0 to 5. Ceiling I get from 1 to 6. And with round, I get 0 to 6. So if I know that I wanted a number that was going to be 0 to 5, I could use floor. If I wanted ceiling, I'd go, I would get 1 to 6. An interesting trick, though, and this is sometimes something that people miss when they do round, is I do get a number from 0 to 6, but the likelihood of me getting a 0 or a 6 is 50% less probable than a 1 through 5. I could go into the details about why it deals with probability and statistics, but it's always best never to use round when working with random numbers. Either use floor or ceiling. And that will get you the consistent results with all the random numbers that you generate. So now that we have the basics of working with random numbers and how to actually generate them in ActionScript, 
we're going to start using this more in actually starting to work with ActionScript action animation in the next video.